this is Diane from Teach Pre-K. Um, today I'm going to talk to you guys about classroom management. I've had a lot of people comment and ask some questions about classroom management and what I do. So how I thought I would do this because I have attempted this video so many times and it's been just so long and all over the place. I'm going to go through kind of an average day. Um, I will give you some general tips as I go, but I'm going to kind of start at the beginning of my day and work through it and just talk a little bit about how I manage the issues that might come up with every part of my day. Um, I'm going to start with the very beginning of the day at drop-off. I have a strict policy with the parents that if their child is crying, that they drop them with me and they get the heck out of there as fast as they can. Because a lot of times just to calm their child, I'll hold them and walk up and down the hallway and if they're there, it starts it all up again. But the most important thing that I can do uh, to start each day off right is to be there at the door saying hello to each of my kids and what I do to just kind of um, solidify the relationships that I have with the kids which is the most important thing the number one thing in classroom management is to have a good relationship with your children in the classroom even the ones that are the absolute hardest but when they come at the beginning of the day I might notice oh you've got new shoes on today or that's such a pretty top or I'll say, wow, you hung your backpack up all by yourself. You're amazing. Oh, you remembered your water bottle today. Or wow, you look like you've had a good morning. Or I ask them what they had for breakfast. Or I just, I show interest in them right off the bat. Um, they come in knowing that I care about them. I might remember a little detail like, oh, how did swim lessons go yesterday? Or how was your ballet class? Or do you have gymnastics after school today? That way they know that I'm listening to them and remembering them and I care about what's going on in their life. Um, so start right off the bat, greet them at the door if you can. Um, I have an aide, so I'm, I'm really lucky. She can be at uh, our mini center tables or like some people call it morning work. I just have three tables with toys that the kids come in and, and they can socialize at the beginning of the day. and play things and hang out with the teachers a little bit before we start our, our day formally. But I think that's really, really important. And once my dismissal time is over, we have about a 10 minute drop off window. I will go and I will spend time with as many kids as I possibly can. A lot of times I get cornered by one or two kids and they want me to read a book or they want me to do a puzzle with them or they want all my attention. I do what I can to break away from that um, and give as many kids my attention as I possibly can. And if I give them all a little bit of positive attention at the beginning of the day, my day is just gonna go better. Um, at the end of our mini center time, we clean up and any transition is really, really hard. How I transition from that morning work time to clean up is I have a light helper and that light helper turns off the lights and will give a warning and say one more minute and I teach the kids at the beginning of the year that means you have one more minute to build your tower color your picture whatever and then we're going to have to clean up and go on to what's next in our day so um, we always get a warning so they know it's coming because a lot of kids have a really hard time breaking away from playing with a certain toy or building a tower or whatever and then moving on to something else. It can really be a struggle for them. So if I know a child has a hard time with that, I will go up to them and I'll like just get down to them and say, okay, we're going to be cleaning up in about one minute. We're going to have to put all these toys away. Sometimes I say, you know, we're not going to have a fit today. We're just going to make a good choice and clean up our toys. It will depend on what's going on in the classroom and how, um, like what degree the, the issues have been with that particular child. So I kind of give them a little reminder. Oh, and at the greeting at the door, like if I have a child that's been like hitting a lot or 
talking out a lot or something that's that's become a little bit of an issue for them, I will remind them at the door. I'll say, hey, we're going to we're gonna make great choices today. Hey, we're going to really keep our hands to ourselves today. I'm going to help you do that. Or, um, you know what, you and I, we are going to work on not calling out today. And I make it be like it's a group thing, and then they, they feel a lot better. Um, then we clean up. The light helper will turn the lights off and say it's time to clean up. And the rule is wherever you are, you clean that table area up first and then you can move on and help friends until the whole room's cleaned up and then you can sit down. And I shared in a previous video that sometimes I have little tricks where um, even before the one minute warning, I will have like floor buckets and the I bring out like some special buckets that I don't bring out every day and the kids can each have a bucket. Well, four kids can have a bucket, so it's kind of special. And they can pick up the toys and then sort the toys on the proper tables and whatever. But that's helped, but we work together and it's like teamwork makes the dream work. And I don't really have a cleanup song. I've tried that before. I've tried having a song we sing. I've tried having a song that we play and oh my gosh, the room has to be cleaned up before this is done. And I really just haven't had luck with it. It's not something I'm comfortable with, so we just clean up. And then I sing a little song, put your pockets on the rug, on the rug. I use this tune for everything. I should probably get another one, but I just use it all the time. So they know then it's time to put their pockets on the rug. And they find a spot on the rug to sit. We talk about, okay, crisscross applesauce, hands in your lap. Crisscross applesauce, hands in your lap. If you can hear Mrs. Lee, touch your nose. If they're being really talky, I sing really, really quietly. If you can hear Mrs. Lee, touch your chin. If you can hear Mrs. Lee, put your hands on your shoulders. And eventually they all come down and they're listening. And we have five things that we do when we come to the rug and I have a little poster that has all five things. And it is, we sit crisscross applesauce. Crisscross applesauce. We put our hands in our lap and I always say, okay, put your hands together. They are make them best buddies and give each other a hug and put them in your lap. We have watching eyes. We're watching our teacher to see what comes next. We have listening ears. Touch your ears. Can you hear me with your ears? Yes, okay. Um, and yeah, so listening ears, watching eyes, crisscross applesauce, hands in your lap. There's one more. I don't know. How embarrassing. I've done this for 13 years and I don't know. I'll remember. It'll come to me. Um, but I remind them of how to sit and how to listen every single time we come to the rug. Sometimes it's got to be longer. I teach them how to sit crisscross applesauce. You sit down with your legs in front of you. You cross one leg over another and then you squeeze them up to your belly and you're sitting crisscross applesauce. And some kids have a hard time and we just work on it during the year. Um, but, uh, Last year, I had a really hard time with kids touching each other on the rug because it's always hands to yourself, keep your hands to yourself, keep your hands to yourself from the moment they walk in the room until they leave every day, it seems. Um, but because I had such a hard time with that, I got carpet spots for this year that I can put on my rug and I can say, you know, find your carpet spot. Um, I have letters that go around the outside of my rug and one year, one little boy had to sit on the W every day and then other kids figured out he had to sit on the W every day and then we had fights about the W so I just made the W go away by putting a piece of paper on it and said no one can sit there. Um, you gotta do what you gotta do uh, at that point. But I teach the kids um, how to listen by eyes on the teacher. We listen with our whole body. Eyes on the teacher, listening ears. Oh, number five. Zip your lips. We gotta zip your lips because you can't listen if you're talking. Hands in your lap and what's amazing about this, then you're keeping your hands to yourself. You're not touching your friends. Um, I will do things when I have kids like they blurt out a lot and, and sometimes I allow that to happen, but we practice raising our hands when we have something to say. And here is a big tip for that. With kids this age, never say, Raise your hand if blah, 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 because all their hands will go up. You've got to say like, if you have this book at home, put your hand in the air, raise your hand and show me. If you have a cat, 
Put your hand in the air, raise your hand and show me if you have something you want to say today about getting a boo-boo. Put your hand up in the air and I will call on you and you can talk. We always have the kids that are super impatient. So one thing I always do when we're doing a putting your hand in the air practice is I will look at the kids who I can tell are having a harder time waiting for me to get to them. I will say, I see you and what you have to say is important. Just wait your turn. I see you, don't worry, I'll get to you. I see you um, and I will usually use their name too. And that way they know that even though other people are getting my attention at that point, they're going to get my attention and so they are not gonna act out and do crazy stuff. Um, on the rug, I, I will also have issues like everyone else has, the kids rolling around under the rug, poking their friends, talking, whatever. I will give them a warning. And um, if I have to give them another warning, then I will say, okay, this is your last warning. If you can't stop talking to Jessica, I am gonna have to move you over by Kyle. Um, of course, they're gonna talk again, more likely than not. And I'll have to say, okay, I need you to sit in that spot over by Kyle. And they're looking at me and I said, you can go there by yourself or Miss Smith, who's my aide, she can help you. What would you like? Do you wanna go there by yourself or do you need help? And it's not done with any animosity. I'm not frustrated, I'm fine. I am never going to get into a power struggle with a child. That is one of the biggest rules. I would say it's one of the most important rules is do not get in a power struggle with those kids. A lot of them wanna push you until there is a power struggle, but take yourself out of all of it. And the way you can do that is always give a choice, but make sure the choices you're giving will only give the outcome that you want as a teacher. Um, so, you know, Susie will move over by Kyle to stop talking to Jessica, or if, Su if Susie chooses not to, my aides know. You get up, you gently guide them over there, even if you have to just pick them up and plop them down. Um, it's never done in a rough way or a hurried way. They just get put back down and just say, that's a, that's a good choice you made. If you needed help, I'm glad you made that choice. I want them to think they're in charge when really I'm in charge the whole time. Um, it takes a little mental gymnastics and a little bit of practice to get that down, but you can find ways to make that fit for any situation. I also have my writing center situated so that if they sit at my little round table, writing table, they can still see me, they can still see the book I'm reading if I'm reading a book, they can see the smart board, they can hear the discussion. So um, sometimes if they need a break, from some kind of behavior, rolling around on the rug or knocking a friend or chatting and um, they're just having a really hard time with self-regulation. I, again, I use the same choices. You, you know, I'll need you to go over to the writing table until you feel ready to come back and join us and listen. You can come back any time you want. You can go there by yourself or Miss Smith will help you go over there. Same thing, good choice, you made a good choice. I can see that you didn't need help today. But remember, you can come back whenever. And I've had kids uh, sit there for a long time. And I'll say, remember, you can come back. Are you ready to come back? And some of them say, nope, because they know. I'm gonna go back there, I'm gonna just start talking to Johnny and I'll probably hit Susie and who knows what else I'm gonna do. This is pretty good for me right now to be by myself. Or they'll say, yeah and they'll come on over. Um, I don't expect perfection. Uh, these are really little kids. I expect them to mess up a lot. I'm there to teach them how to behave in the classroom. I am not expecting them to know how to behave in the classroom. Even if I told them yesterday or 10 minutes ago how to behave on the rug, in the centers, whatever, they are little kids. They are fresh, brand new human beings. They need a lot of reminding. They need a lot of guiding. They need a lot of patience. And they need it done in a way that is not anxiety producing or shaming. 
So um, I'll tell you, sending them to the writing table maybe happens once or twice a year. I've had it happen three times a year. They know I mean business. They know if I give them that warning and if I tell them, hey, next time I'm gonna have to have you go sit at the writing table or you're gonna have to move your spot. They just, they know I mean business. Um, I try moving their spot more than moving them to the writing table, but you can tell pretty quick if they just need a break from the whole situation, but I still want them to feel like they're a part of the class. So find a place that doesn't feel like a punishment corner because I don't like punishment. Um, it's redirecting, it's letting them participate in figuring out how to behave and maybe taking a break or whatever. I don't want anything punitive in my classroom. I have had to have sticker charts with individual children for some very specific behavior issues that I need to work on with their parents. But I give kids a lot of slack and it's just when it's to a point where I'm like, yeah, they don't really understand what I'm talking about. I'll get the parents involved. Another thing that I do every week with my weekly newsletter is if everyone's being handsy or I have a couple of kids who are really being handsy, I will send it in my group email to everybody. Hey, remind your kids that when they're at school, they need to keep their hands to themselves. It's not okay to hit friends or kick friends or bite friends or whatever the issue that is going on. And hey, give your kids a gentle reminder that at school we need to take turns and share toys. We're working so hard to, you know, all take care of each other and learn to share and support each other on our journey to becoming great students in the classroom. Um, I will only contact a parent when I feel like things, we need a little extra help or things have gotten to a point where, you know, I think I need mom and dad to understand my language. I need to understand the language they use at home and we need to work this out together. And um, yeah, I, but really they're three to five. I don't expect them to be perfect or even very good at this because they're brand new. Um, so I wanna talk about another transition, which is lining up um, again. People have lineup jobs. I've got a line leader, a door holder, and a caboose. And each day I rotate my jobs. I do not pick jobs on behavior. However, if a job is really important to a, a child and they're having a really hard time self-regulating or they're really being mean to somebody, I'll just say, hey, you know, I don't know if I can let you be line leader because that's a really big responsibility if you're not gonna follow the rules of my classroom. Um, and at the beginning of the year, that's all it is. The whole first week is practicing, 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 rules, 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 rules. Um, I have, let's see, um, keep your hands to yourself is one across the board rule because these hands, these feet, these teeth, they can hurt people. We want to keep everybody safe. I want to keep all of you safe. So... We just keep our bodies to ourselves. That way we know we're not hurting any people at all and no one's gonna hurt us if they're doing the same thing. Um, walking feet, I'm phrasing things in the positive, hands to yourself, walking feet. If we run, we can trip and fall and we can skin our knees, we can get a bruise. Um, I've actually had a kid have to go to the hospital with a really bad concussion. It was a total freak accident, but he was running in the classroom. Um, and he was this like perfectly wonderful kid who like never did anything wrong and just was so excited to come to my center that he ran and tripped and, and whatever. So remind, remind, remind always. Um, so I think having three really important rules. So keep your hands to yourself, walking and inside voice are my three big top, top rules of the classroom. Two of them have to do with safety one of them has to do with just what is appropriate. We can yell and scream and everything outside as much as we want, but in the classroom, we just use our normal talking voice. So that is that. Um, when I line the kids up, like after centers, I call them to the rug after we clean up. Same kind of clean up warning, clean up procedures. Um, you know, hold on, I'm gonna go to centers before I go there, sorry guys. I'm trying so hard not to make this all over the place and I feel like I'm not being successful. But while we are at center time, I dismiss the kids to go to centers one at a time. 
Or I'll say, like, I'll look around the room and I'm like, okay, only three people are wearing pink. If you're wearing pink, go to a center. Only two people are wearing purple. If you're wearing purple, go choose a center. But I also, um, I have center necklaces. I've talked about this in a previous video too. Um, there are four necklaces at my centers that have necklaces, so only four kids can play there at once. That's a way um, I keep the crowd control, so that's a really big part of classroom management. We have specific rules with those necklaces. Um, when you take them off, you hang them back up. If you don't, they slowly start disappearing. If I walk by, I'll just pick it up, carry it with me where I go, and that's one less person that gets to play there. Um, they cannot hide the center necklaces while their friend goes to see a teacher and do a teacher center. I will make them leave the center and not come back for the rest of the day for that. Um, and it's not really done as a punishment. It's just like, that's our rule for center tags. You know, you're not supposed to do that. Um, so that's that. So then after center, same kind of light switch, um, cleanup time. I also have a class doorbell and I have these little chimey ones. I think I demonstrated one of those in one of my previous, um, videos because after a while, I don't even notice if the lights have gone off and I have to ask my aide, like, did somebody turn the light off to save time to clean up? Um, so if I'm not noticing it, the kids aren't either. And sometimes we need to switch it up so that we get their attention. So we will, uh, after cleanup, we will transition back to the rug where we will talk about the centers we've done today. We might watch a little video on the smart board, just kind of something so the teachers can get their breath. We can get placemats out for snack, which we're gonna do after we go outside and Kids calm down a little bit. Then smart board video or game is done. I have them calm, ready to go. Okay, it's time we're gonna go outside. I'm looking for friends that are sitting crisscross applesauce, hands in their lap, who have their eyes on me, who are listening and have their lips zipped. Um, sometimes I sing a song like, I like the way that Susie's sitting. I like the way that George is sitting. And I'll do that with every kid's name and eventually everyone just wants me to sing their name so bad. I do that at circle time too. Um, and at the end I go, thank you very much. And then I'll keep repeating until I've done all the kids in the class. Um, but I could also sing, if your name is Carol, go line up. If your name is Sean, go line up. And I have a tape line and it looks like a mermaid's tail. Like you can go line up on the mermaid line, put your feet on the mermaid line. Our line leader today is Joseph. Our door holder is Camilla. Our caboose is Josiah. And everybody else lines up in between. So I never ever line everybody up at once. Disaster. I never ever tell everyone to go out in the hallway, which is where their coat hooks are, and get their coats at once. It's a disaster. A lot of the times I like to bring their coats in while they're watching a, a little learning video on the smart board, and I just put their coat next to them and they put them on. So they've got their coats on, we're ready to go, and we, little, we sing them out um, to line up. Then once we're lined up, if they're being noisy, I might sing, when the line is quiet, we will go, and I'll sing it in a low, quiet voice. Then they slowly, people start being quiet because they're hearing something different and they will all be quiet. When we're going out to the playground, like we're going out to the playground, please remember, we are quiet in the hall. We use our walking feet and we put our hand on the handrail the whole way up and my kids go quietly up the stairs. Sometimes I'll stop if somebody runs or jumps, I make them start back at the bottom and come back up, start at the top, go back down. Um, that's, that's just the rule. So they know that's also the hand on the handrail, the walking feet on the stairs, that's safety. We go over that over and over and over the first few weeks. We get a little reminder before we go, 10 second reminder, off we go. They know what they should do, I've reminded them. Oh, another thing about centers. Um, to also keep things running smoothly in centers, I will stop at every center and I will give a 30 second rundown of how we behave in that center, 
how we put the necklaces on, take the necklaces off if we're at the sensory bin. Do we put rice on our friend's head? Do we eat the rice? Do we put the rice in our nose? Do we put the rice in our mouth? Do we put them in our ears? Do we put them in our cowboy boots? Um, and they think it's so funny, but I've had kids do all those things. Um, so we kind of do a little rundown of the rules for the sensory bin, for the block table, for dramatic play. And remember, if you read a book, you put the book back on the shelf. If you use the markers, the lids go back on, which we practiced over and over the first week of school. So they know, I know they know how to do it. And I give them those reminders every single day from the first day of school to the last day of school. I am never, ever going to assume that they know what to do at the centers. I change those centers. They have different toys and different things every week. Um, they need to be reminded that they just don't dump all the toys out on the floor. They need to, to be reminded that we stay and clean up after. They need to be reminded that they don't eat the rice in the rice bin, that they don't put the beans up their nose, that they don't knock over their friend's towers, blah, 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 blah. Um, I can do it pretty fast. They hear it every day. They never go, uh, they listen. And the one day I don't give them the rules is the one day they're going to knock someone's tower down, put rice on somebody's head, go like this with the rice and it's all over the floor. Um, they'll take the shopping cart from Dramatic Play and be running around like crazy. They can only use those with walking feet and I remind them every day. So the key to good classroom management for preschool and pre-K is remind, 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 remind again. Once you think you've said it 400 times, you need to say it 400 more times. Um, on our way to the library, we walk through the entire school. So I tell them, hey, we're going to the library. We cannot talk in the hallway. The teachers are teaching the big kids and they need to learn. They need to be able to hear their teachers. Um, I say that over and over a few times. Then when we go to the library again, I'll say, hey, does anybody remember why we shouldn't talk in the hall? And so the big kids can learn. They all say that. Um, it's great. My kids are perfect in that hallway. There's a tape line down the middle of the hallway and they just need to have their feet on it. It's yellow and I just the whole way down, I say, feet on the yellow line, put your feet on the yellow line, zip your lips, feet on the yellow line. Sometimes I have them do chicken, airplane, soldier, you know, I have them do stuff silently and they follow along and that kind of gives them something they need to pay attention to. Um, we know we have to be quiet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, snack time, we just have to, you know, keep all four legs of our chair on the floor. Um, another rule that I have in my classroom is your feet cannot go above your head ever, ever. So there's no cartwheels, handstands, somersaults on my rug. They all try it. Um, but you guys, like I said, I say all these things just about every day. And what I say, if the kids start doing something they know they shouldn't do, I'll say, no, thank you. No, thank you. Sometimes I'm on the rug and I see someone start to poke somebody or it's, oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. We keep our hands to ourselves. No, thank you. We have walking feet. Sometimes I'll see kids at a center ready to do something crazy or kind of in the middle of doing something crazy. And instead of saying, don't do that or Jim, you leave that center. I'll be like, uh, Jim, show me a different choice, please. Make a different choice. Show me a different choice, please. Um, I say please and thank you a lot. I say no thank you for almost everything. <laughs> um, but I really try to keep positive. Um, and uh, one of the most important things is to realize that if things are going south, you need a reset. And you need to look not at what your kids are doing. You need to look at how you're handling the problem. You are the adult in the room. You're the one that can make the real changes. And that's going to help them make the real changes. Um, just keep in mind over and over that that same kid that's talking on the rug is going to be the same kid in chemistry class when he's a senior that the teacher is going to be saying, hey, Johnny, zip it up. Listen to me. Um, Gosh, uh, I could go on forever. I already have gone on forever. But just remember, 
be consistent. Remind them all the time. Remember how old they are. Remember you are in charge. Look at every situation and if the three-year-old's in charge, you're doing it wrong. If the four-year-old's in charge, you're doing it wrong. If the two-year-old is in charge, you're really doing it wrong. Um, keep out of power struggles. So that's that, guys. I hope this has been helpful. If you have things that you do, oh yeah, hey, I do need to mention, somebody asked if I do the red, green, yellow choices and the cards and all that. No, I don't and I never, never have, never will. Um, I think it's anxiety producing. I feel like it's too public. It becomes, um, you know, them reporting to their mom, Johnny was on red again today and I'm just not gonna do that to the kids. I don't want my classroom to be punitive. I don't want it to be a place of anxiety. Um, I don't ever want the children to feel shamed. Um, I feel like if they feel happy and confident in my classroom that um, they're going to behave better for me anyway. So maintain your relationships. Don't get into power struggles. Learn everything you can about their kid. Know your kids. Know their favorite color. Know the name of, names of their pets, their siblings. When they have dance class, when they have swim class, ask them how that went. Tell them about yourself. Create a real relationship with all of them. And share as much of yourself as you can and they'll share more of themselves with you. And you're just, you're gonna have a better classroom. Is your classroom gonna be perfectly managed? No. Are they going to not have any behavior problems? No. Are they going to hit, kick, pinch, and push from day one to day 180? Yeah, probably. Um, but it's just the amount that it's done, the manner it's done, the feelings behind it, and how you handle it that's going to make the difference in your life and in their life. So also, remember to give yourself grace um, and remember that you might encounter a situation that you are not qualified to handle and don't just tough it out. Ask for help, talk to your administrator, talk to their parents, talk to your school counselor, but get support. Don't expect it to be offered. If you've hit a point where you're like, I cannot handle this child, um, then maybe they need to be referred to a program that will help get them to a point that they can function in your classroom. Um, more likely than not, it's not their fault. It's the fault of early childhood trauma or just, you know, things at home, not having the coping skills in place um, to deal with their current situation. So keep that in mind as well. So I hope that was helpful. Um, anyway, if you have comments, questions, you do things differently, uh, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.